Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Sunday, September 27th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Charlo Rosario. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first, before I go further, let me acknowledge Derek James here, right? We talk about unified titles for boxers. I don't think we shine enough of a light on trainers who have titleists in different divisions. Derek James has title holders at welterweight, at super welter, and at middleweight. That's a huge accomplishment, right? It's huge. Let's also talk about 154. We now have a gold standard 154. And that gold standard is Jermel Charlo. Right now, I'll agree. Brian Castano and some others have arguments they can make. Let me just throw this out here, too. Virgil Ortiz, the welterweight, to me, has the style to mount the biggest challenge to Jermel Charlo. Right? Understand he'd have to gain weight to enter 154. But, apparently Virgil Ortiz walks around heavier than 147. Let's talk about why. Let's talk about this fight. Let me congratulate Charlo to the gamblers out there. He delivered for us. Right? He got the KO. You actually got better odds than if you were to have taken him on a money line where you were paying like a minus 240. Right? By getting the KO, he delivered on a minus 130. Plus, you had upside if Jason Rosario had won the fight because we were hedged up. But what I want people to do is to back away from the moment. Right? It's a fight you have to see. But back away for the moment. What I want people to consider is the following. And all praise to Jamel Charlo for winning the fight. But the first round, right, can we agree that Jamel Charlo doesn't hit Jason Ro Ro Rosario with his glove? That that first knockdown is him doing a Roy Jones against Joe Calzaghe, right? He hits him with a portion of his forearm right around the wrist area. Can we agree on that? That the punch didn't land the way Charlo intended. And that Rosario, who is up against the ropes, may have lost his balance and realized, okay, before I get hit with something real, not a wrist forearm, but an actual glove punch, let me go down. That's the way it looked to me. So don't get me wrong, the punch, we'll put that in quotes, causes the knockdown in the first round, but that knockdown is less than convincing. I could easily have seen a judge scoring that a 10-9 round, especially if judges had access to replay, right? It's not like Charlo hurts Jason Rosario in the first round. He doesn't. He gets him in an awkward situation, then he throws a punch that glances off Rosario. Only the glove doesn't hit Rosario. It's more like the wrist forearm area. Well, from that moment, and people are going to disagree with me, it's okay. Just back away from the actual result of the fight. We're just going off fight styles here. Because we're trying to figure out a way to handicap future fights involving Charlo and Rosario. Right? Charlo's in rarefied air here where anyone seeking legitimacy at 154 is going to need to fight him. So he's going to be fighting tough guys. He himself, now in his 30s, wants a legacy. He wants to fight tough guys. Here's my argument. And keep in mind, I'm very happy he got the KO. 
right? Help me recover somewhat from the loss I suffered in a great fight. The Maris Breedis, Unier Dorticos fight, right? That's a great fight. We'll talk about that in another video. Charlo delivered. This isn't bitterness. But what I want the handicappers out there to do, what I want the gamblers out there to do, is to look at the second round to the sixth round when Rosario gets caught. By the way, in the sixth round, the key punch is not the right hand. It's the left that seems to hit him right over the eye. Right? It's not the temple. Look at the replay. From that second round to the sixth round, that's the blueprint, in my opinion, on how to beat Jamel Charlo. I thought Rosario is doing much better. Much better. Then the post-fight press has indicated in their write-up on the fight, right? As I like to say, knockouts cause amnesia. A guy gets stopped, it's a celebration for the winner. But what you saw in that second round and continuing on to when Rosario gets dropped, right? And it's, it's the second knockdown that's the big knockdown in the fight. Not the first, not the third. Rosario is showing you that if you come forward and you need foot speed for this, Rosario has the foot speed. If you come forward and if you force ambush fighter Jamel Charlo onto his back foot, Charlo is not the same guy. Right? Understand, Charlo at times is getting hit in the body by Rosario repeatedly. For those of you who have a tape of the fight, I urge you to re-watch it. Right? Charlo's defense falls apart. Right? Let me just say this too. Charlo gets backed up to the ropes several times in the fight. As Rosario comes forward, you notice Charlo isn't a guy who can just Stand his ground in the pocket. Keep him on his shoulder. Clinch him. Or, as they did in the Maris Breedis fight, both guys, move laterally. In other words, you don't want to move back all the time because then you find yourself running out of real estate. Right? You find yourself up against the ropes, which Charlo did several times in this fight. Right? So Charlo on his back foot where he's being smothered, where an opponent is determined to walk him down, to come inside. Charlo's not only less effective, right? He's much better jumping into the pocket against a slow-footed opponent, right? His, his effectiveness is not only reduced, but his defense falls apart. Folks, I, I was astonished by how many times Charlo gets hit in the body. I was astonished by the fact that Charlo knew this guy's trying to walk forward. And Charlo couldn't just stand his ground and keep the fight in the middle of the ring. Let's talk about what Rosario could have done better. Right? As it was, I thought he's winning the rounds. Right, He gets knocked down in the first. That's a big knockdown because that'll get judges into a pattern. Right, The favorite comes in, I believe. I know we want to believe it's a level playing field in boxing. But I believe everyone in the arena understood, even in a unification fight, that Charlo was the favorite. And Charlo was a better than two to one favorite. Right, Everyone understood that. So when the favorite starts fast, gets the knockdown, even though he actually starts slow, if you look at that first round, apart from the knockdown, right, then I believe when you get to closer rounds, the second round, the third round, the fourth round, there are a group of judges out there 
we're going to say, oh, the favorite's winning this fight. In actuality, I thought, you have to give the first round to Charlo, right? There's a knockdown in the first round. But then the second round, the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round, I thought all of those went to Rosario, right? Charlo on his back foot loses his volume. Charlo at times in this fight is hardly throwing punches. He's being walked down by a guy who, quite frankly, is making mistakes. Rosario comes in a bit too parallel to his opponent. Right, what he should have done to even dampen the possibility that Charlo was going to jump in is he should have come in with a lead shoulder. He could have he he should have come in perpendicular to Charlo. Right? Don't walk in straight, parallel. So Charlo can pick which side of yours to hit, right? Because it's all equidistant. If I'm standing parallel to you, Charlo can say, okay, well, I have access to his left side and his right side. No, you want to come in low. That's the other thing. Rosario, a little bit too vertical. You want to come in a little bit lower. You want to have that shoulder up front, don't you? All you have to do to figure out what I'm trying to convey here is look at Floyd Mayweather. Understand, Mayweather would have one shoulder up front and he'd be able to defend himself by just having a hand like this. Right? You weren't going to be able to hit the other side because the other side was on the other part of his body. Let me also say, too, that if you come in lower than Jason Rosario came in and if... Charlo tries to jump in to throw punches. He'll run into your shoulder. You want your shoulder between you and the other guy. Let me say too that you need to be wired when you're fighting an episodic ambush fighter like this to throw certain punches. So, and you saw this from Charlo's older brother, older by a minute. Jamal Charlo, if you're fighting a guy who's diving in the pocket, you need to be able to throw an uppercut, right? Figure out the balance. That's actually easier if your shoulder is between you and the opponent, right? Let me say this too. If you're Rosario and you're coming forward, I'm surprised Rosario wasn't prepared to just take a step back, then throw a left hook, right? Rosario comes in a little bit too parallel to Charlo. Even though I had Charlo in the fight, I have to tell you, when I was watching this fight and we got to like the fourth round, I realized the fight was up for grabs. I realized that that first round knockdown didn't hurt Rosario, right? The fight's up for grabs. Charlo's out of his hot spot. He's backing up. His volume has dropped. In my opinion, objectively, he's losing rounds. Now, the sixth round comes. It's the left hand that gets Rosario in trouble, and that's a brutal knockdown. I would argue that that's the knockdown of the fight, not the jab knockdown two rounds later. You'll notice that Rosario falls to the canvas in pieces. It looks like his nervous system has short-circuited. It looks like he's neurologically on thin ice. Then when he gets up and the ref is talking to him and you see him nodding his head, you notice his coordination's off. Now I'll agree. I'll agree. In the seventh round, he seems to make a bit of a comeback. He's back on his front foot. Right? Think about it. He's back on his front foot. Guess what? Charlo is backing up in that seventh round. Look at the tape. They're back to the pattern where they were before. 
But you notice Rosario is not moving as well in the seventh round as he was before the devastating knockdown in the sixth round. Let me say this too. If you get hit on the temple, it certainly impacts your balance and ability to go forward. Just like if you get hit on the chin. Those are like hot spots. Well, if you get hit, I believe he gets hit right above the eye. That could have the same effect. I didn't think the left jab to the body in the eighth round was that big a punch. I didn't think it was that big a punch. I did think it threw off Rosario's breathing, right? He's hit kind of like right above the belt, right? He even has an elbow in the way that seems to take a little bit of the sting out of the punch. I believe it threw off his breathing, but you'll notice when he hits the canvas, I believe he wasn't right before then. Right on the canvas, he's breathing out of his mouth. He looks uncoordinated. I believe this is in part because of the damage caused by the brutal six-round knockdown. So let me tip my hat to Jamel Charlo. As a gambler, I'm certainly happy he won the fight by KO. I would have been in trouble had the fight gone the distance. Right? But... His ambush style opens the door to people who know how to walk him down. You don't even have to follow him after the ambush to win. If you can back him up before the ambush, right? Styles make fights. Jamel Charlo is proven. I believe he's the gold standard at 154 right now. Right? But I will say this, he's going to have to figure out a way to avoid being walked down by heavy-handed opponents who are determined to do so and who are willing to throw punches to the body. Right? Today we're celebrating a Charlo win. I believe if you look at the tape, there's a lot to be concerned about in the second round, the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round. With Charlo's decreased volume, with Charlo's habit of finding himself up against the ropes, with Charlo getting hit in the ribs repeatedly by an opponent determined to walk him down. If Rosario just knew how to hide his head better and how to get his shoulder between him and Charlo, so Charlo had a limited area to hit, right? Understand, you lead with the shoulder. Rabbit punches aren't allowed in boxing. You can't hit a guy legally in the back, right? If Rosario just turned himself a bit more, this could have been a different fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I'll talk about Jamal Charlo's, excuse me, Jamal Charlo's, the hitman, uh, his win over Derevianchenko. But, as I said in an earlier video, I didn't see the value in that fight. Right? And as it was, that fight ended up going the distance. Right? Both guys had their moments. But I will say, one of the secrets in that fight was Hitman's jab, right? Also, Hitman's uppercut, right? Hitman has a way to keep you outside to avoid being walked down and then making you pay, right? Making you pay when you get inside. Let me say this, too, just comparing Rosario to Derevianchenko. You notice that Derevianchenko would come in low. Right? That's what you have to do to avoid getting, you know, timed and hit. Here, Rosario, because he's a slugger with a high, you know, KO percentage, Rosario 
with a passive defense. Rosario is not defensively blessed, so Rosario tries to walk down. Jamel Charlo, who has power, standing up. He's not low like the Revianchenko. Right? And he's too parallel. Not only is he vertical, he's parallel. So understand, Jamel Charlo didn't have to be as crafty as his older brother was. Because Derevianchenko's better defensively than Rosario. I will say this, though. Obviously, Derevianchenko, who I fought beat, Gennady Golovkin, didn't have the punch that Rosario had. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.